All right. Good Wednesday morning to you, House Church Tulsa. We're talking about uh, the five gates of grief from my book that I love so much, um, The Wild Edge of Sorrow. I recommend this to everybody all of the time um, when you're facing grief or a or a sorrow or a sadness that you just can't seem to get through, get this book um, by Francis Weller, The Wild Edge of Sorrow, and allow it to be a comfort to you. I've had this on a bookshelf close to me for the last five years, and uh, I, I return to it over and over again. It's not one that you read one time and you're done. You, you I read it and return to it over and over again as I go through things. <clears throat> this week I wanted to take you through my private devotion and have just a time with me um, as I'm stepping through the five, what this author calls the five gates of grief and, um, talking about the different sorrows that we accumulate over a lifetime. And sometimes we can, um, slip into sadly into a depression or into a sadness because of congested sorrows that are never metabolized or digested into the system. We know that the body keeps the score. We know that trauma is held in our, at the cellular level. We know that griefs and sorrows we have a memory of them inside of our tissues and our bones and our muscles. And that's why movement and, uh, hey, Jerry, good morning. That's why movement and activity and walking and water and drinking water and drinking uh, good things for yourself and moving and moving those hips. You know, sadness is held in the hips. Um, if you can move those, those and stretch yourself and and, and as you're stretching, having good intentions and energy to flow through you and allow things to move through you. We're never meant to carry the burdens of our past. We're meant to allow them to move off of us and cast them onto the Lord. You are, in fact, the beloved of the Father. You have a divine destiny. You have a purpose and a plan. There's, there's a plan for you today, not just for your life in general that we never actually get to, but for today. For you to live, I, as I see Jerry on, I want to talk about living in the now, living in the present moment. And Jerry, for you, what I've been, what I've, I'm just going to speak to you, brother, because you're on here. Um, I've been sensing in my heart over the last two days, the Yahweh that you love, loves you in return. And I've just had that on my heart. The Yahweh that you love, loves you in return. And so praise the Lord. Um, I've got, we're going to talk about the power of prayer, the power, the, and, and, grief. So the third gate of grief, we've talked about the first gate was losing something that you love. The second gate was, um, what was the second gate? The places that have not known love, the places that have not known love, the tender places, and talking about returning to those things with our mature whole selves and speaking health and healing to them. Even if you're a abuser, so to speak, or if the person who caused shame for you in your life or that first introduced you to shame is no longer around, you can return to those soft, tender places in your own heart and as a wholehearted, spiritually alive, um, energetic person can go back to those places in your heart and you can speak and hold yourself in light and life and heal yourself as the Holy Spirit heals through you. The third gate, hey, good morning, guys, uh, Tammy. Um, the third gate is the sorrows of the world. All right, so the third gate of grief opens, again, I'm reading from my book that I recommend to everybody, The Wild Edge of Sorrow, opens uh, when we register the losses of the world around us. Whether or not we consciously recognize that the daily diminishment of species, habitats, and cultures is noted in our psyches. Much of the grief we carry is not personal, but shared, communal. What about in this pandemic? Hello. <laughs> Talking about going into grocery stores and stuff like that and just kind of feeling the weight of the world, the weight of change, the weight of chaos, sadness for what things used to be like. Um, much of the grief we carry is communal. It is difficult to walk down the street and not feel the collective sorrows of homelessness and the economic, economic insanity revealed in commercialism and consumerism. It takes everything we have to deny the sorrows of the world. At nearly every grief ritual, people share their profound sadness for the earth. And I know that you can relate to that. I know I can. One, one woman shared her gratitude for finally having a place to acknowledge in community this grief. They feel what psychologist Chellis Glendening calls earth grief. 
She writes, to open our hearts to the sad history of humanity and the devastated state of the earth is the next step in our reclamation of our bodies, the body of our human community and the body of the earth. I want to move forward. I'm not going to read every word of this. Um, the cumulative grief of the world is overwhelming. The litany of losses could fill this book. Our ways of living have become corrosive to the earth, to prairie dogs and grizzly bears, to bluefin tuna and monarch butterflies and cultures. I'm always so happy these days when I see a monarch butterfly. It makes me so happy. Uh, when we see dead things lying on the side of the road, deer, raccoons, skunks, possums, foxes, shopping malls homogenize the landscape of our community, turning them into a bland slurry. We are depleting with an ever-growing tenacity the complex, multi-layered song of the world and replacing it with a single-pitched monotone depositing empty calories, sterile seeds, and meaningless objects in every developing country while silencing forever the voices of hundreds of cultures. That is just so true. I, I feel that kind of, of loss. Um, whenever I see an, another place of open land um, taken over by commercialism and more shopping malls go up or more storefronts go up, it's just so, so sad to me um, when that happens. Not that the earth can't handle what we're doing, because I believe that God created this world and our universe to support everything. It, it has a renewable ...ness to it that I don't think we give it credit for. I mean, God has created this to renew itself. And yes, we are doing things that diminish our environment. And I do believe that um, God had a plan and a fix and a provision in place... ...because God knew the end from the beginning and knew how we would treat this, this world. Anyway, so it moves on to say that this weight carried by all of us... Is, is felt by all of us, and we especially feel that when going out into the world today in this state of this pandemic. It is extremely emotional, and it's felt by all of us, and we need to talk about these things to metabolize and digest them through our systems. What was once uh, da -da 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 -da, original trauma, this trauma carries with it all the recognizable symptoms associated with psychic injury, chronic anxiety, dissociation, distrust, hypervigilance, disconnection, and many others. We are left with a profound loneliness and isolation that we rarely acknowledge. Well, this is a safe place to acknowledge that this morning. <laughs> we are acknowledging it. It is as if we have completely normalized our condition, and yet this feeling of separation profoundly affects the range of our reach and the ways we participate in the landscape and sense our allegiance with the living world. Our, our soul's life flickers dimly, and rather than feeling a kinship with the entire breathing world, we inhabit and defend a small shell of a world, occupying our daily life with what linguist David Hinton calls the relentless industry of self. This beautiful and strange otherness was also meant to be seen in one another's eyes. We too are meant to embody a vivid and animated life, to live close to our wild souls, our wild bodies and minds. We were meant to dance and sing and play and laugh unselfconsciously, to tell stories, to make love, and take delight in this brief but privileged adventure of incarnation. The wild within and the wild without are kin, the one enlivening the other in a beautiful tango. When we pause and allow our separation from the living earth to rise, we feel the grief and sense of loss. We open ourselves to feel holy and to sob even and to cry and to cry about those things and to let ourselves move through them and to acknowledge it. But we don't have to stay there because I have experienced people who stay in that anxiety and stay in the separateness and the severe loneliness and it's not an enjoyable place to stay. <laughs> we must move through these things by acknowledging them and moving forward in our experience of the world and in our whole selves. I move through that through prayer and through the scripture. Today, um, I have been meditating in 
this scripture in Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live in my flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. And that's my ad, my invitation to you today. Don't set aside the grace of God that is so showered upon your life. Don't just stop at the grief and the sorrow, but let it move through you. And let the grace of the Lord fill you up. Let God take an impossible situation and turn it into a possibility. Let God come into that sorrowful place in the heart and comfort you with mercy and with grace. Don't set aside the grace today, but keep the grace forefront in that soul and in that heart. My, We are all children of God and beloved of the Father, and we have this life to live in wholeness. And so these grief gates, they're, they're intended for us to walk through them, to through a threshold to another realm where there is sorrow there is holy ground we're learning that so god bless you today as you take another step through another gate of grief and walk through it in prayer and walk through it in the christ in knowing that you are in the christ so god bless you guys it's good to be sharing my private time devotional time with you i love you god bless you have a great wednesday